Captain's report, February 4th, 2531. Five years. Five long years. That's how long it took us to get Harvest back. RTS content creator Giant Grant Games completed all of StarCraft 2 and WarCraft 3 without losing a unit, which inspired creators to try their hand at beating other RTS games deathless. However, one game has been overlooked. One of THE RTS games of all time, Halo Wars. This run is completed on Legendary with one skull to be revealed later. No unit I control can die, hero units cannot be downed, and losing entities in a squad unit does not count as a death because they resurrect when healed. I must rescue every unit and save every ally, within reason, and buildings are fine to be destroyed. I played this run on Halo Wars Definitive Edition for the Xbox Series X with a controller. Also, there isn't a unit's loss counter in the end of mission score screen, so I'll explain changes in my army supply and make it clear when I reset. Additionally, I'm speeding up the footage because, unlike StarCraft, the game speed cannot be changed and it plays slower than the speed of smell. Welcome to Halo Wars Deathless. Alpha Base is the unit control tutorial where I rally scattered UNSC forces and fight my way to Alpha Base. My first unit is Sergeant John Forge, a hero unit in a souped up Goss Hog. I send him forward to the first ally group and rescue a Warthog. Warthogs are quick jeeps with decent DPS and lack the health to survive most engagements. Forge is technically a Warthog, so he hits harder and has marginally more health. Next group has two hogs for me. Despite Forge's low health, I use him to engage the enemies and keep my normal hog in the back. I have a single use of the Healing Aura Leader ability in this mission, so I'm trying to use it as late in the mission as possible. The game encourages me to use the Hog's ramming ability in the next section to quickly kill infantry units, however I can just drive right past the entire area. The next group gives me Marines, the standard UNSE infantry unit who perform decently and lack the health to survive most engagements. They can throw frag grenades for bursts of DPS. Last group of allies has four more squads of marines. The final objective is to clear alpha base, so I use my healing aura to bring everyone to full. I've been told for years that the healing rate is based on the number of units inside the aura, so you'll see me micromanaging who's in the aura the entire campaign. I couldn't find any info online if this is true, however. Ah uh, well, old habits die at full HP. Only infantry can pass through these shield walls to destroy its power source, which comes up maybe three times in the entire campaign. Destroying the shield wall reveals Alpha Base, hosting two wraiths, many ghosts, and lots of infantry. I position my units in the gateway to form a choke point. I know moving into the base triggers a bombing run on the wraiths, but I don't want to chance aggroing more units. Afterwards, very few units remain in the base, and cleanup is a cinch. Relic Approach is the base building tutorial with the end goal of approaching a Forerunner Relic and destroying a detonator inside. The tutorial is mandatory and quite long and boring, forcing me to build 5 marines before throwing me to the alien wolves. I immediately build turrets and send Forge along a cliff to destroy some methane foundries. Covenant dropships will threaten me endlessly until these foundries are destroyed. After their destruction, I have infinite time to build up because I'm never attacked again, except by one last drop of ghosts. Despite being the first macro mission of the campaign, I can build Scorpion tanks, one of the few units with enough health to survive most engagements, and I can upgrade them with Canister Shell, a powerful ability to deal massive damage in one shot. Normally, you're supposed to destroy a Covenant base, then approach the Relic, but the Covenant build masses of Jackals and Hunters, anti-infantry and anti-vehicle units respectively. Frankly, I have nothing to counter the counter units, so I took the advice of the fearless Captain Cutter. Our primary mission here is to reach that structure. Destroying that base is a secondary objective. I send Forge to clear enemies and scout the area. There is a small path to the relic two feet east of the base that the Covenant kinda can't see. I rescue the allies, max out, and decide to just rush right at the shield wall and see what happens. What happens is one of my scorpions dies, and I realize my last save was almost 20 minutes ago. This time, my plan is to max out my supply in scorpions first, then save the three groups of allies so the warhogs and marines don't take up the space. Also, I should say that my counter to jackals and hunters is technically flamethrowers, but they're so bad that the StarCraft II firebat is god tier by comparison. I then rescue my various non-viable allies and move my army into a defensive position near the shield wall. The next part of the plan is to slowly move units to the shield wall between the downed pelican and the cliff to avoid enemy aggro. My first attempt at reaching the relic was using 5 marines, forge, and 3 hogs. However, the coveys drop on the low ground, the main path, and aggro from the base behind me. Next attempt, I use 6 marines and just skip the door entirely, and discover the covenant just drop in anyways. Third attempt, I squeeze in some scorpions, demonstrating the amazing pathing of Halo Wars. 
This time, I send the marines to the low ground to cut off the cubbies, then push forge and the tanks forward. The tanks canister shell the detonator, and I retreat the marines. The detonator is destroyed and I see my marines running right into reinforcements. They run away and this one squad nearly dies as I fade to black, but they survive for the milliseconds I need. Relic Interior is a no-build mission where I need to save Forge and Anders after their private time was interrupted. Coming to the rescue is the Grizzly, a UNSC super unit that truly embodies tank beats everything. It outmatches anything the Covenant can throw at me. My allies are nearly invincible, except Forge of course, meaning I can take my time reaching them. With all the enemies cleared out, I get control of these marines and heroes, all of whom heal to full. Andrew's special ability is to repair mechanical units, and it's my only form of healing as I don't have the aura. I send one Grizzly to the left bridge to trigger the cutscene where it blows up, and send the rest of my army to the right in a defensive position. Note that when Anders is sent to the bridge console to hack the mainframe, she leaves my army and therefore reduces my supply by one. I have to hold out for a bit from Endless Covenant. One unique unit that spawns is a grunt holding an explosive, which one-shots marines when killed. And I realized I had been saved again. I repeat this exact strategy and spend more time positioning my marines. But when Anders moves closer to the console, she triggers a hacking event without me triggering the other bridge exploding. And the Anders hacking timer vanished too. Gotta love an accidental sequence break. The defense goes swimmingly, and Anders rejoins my army with one supply. The Grizzlies get healed and move forward to trigger an endless wave of hunters while everyone else sprints to the LZ. I keep the Grizzlies behind to protect the allied marine squads, then forge an Anders evac, reducing my army supply by two and ending the mission. Arcadia City is why saving allies is only within reason. There are hundreds of civilians evacuating the city, and it's impossible to save them all. Instead, I focus on keeping every evac shuttle alive. I'm given Forge and some Hornets, and must clear out a civilian spawn point. Hornets are generalist flyers who are sometimes really good, and sometimes really garbage. Next objective is defending three evac shuttles. I'm introduced to Red Team, three powerful Spartans who are unfortunately under the AI's control and try their best to maybe sometimes defend the shuttles. I send my Hornets to the vulnerable Shuttle 1 and Forge to the safest Shuttle 2. I don't send anything to Shuttle 3 because, no matter what, it gets shot down. But hey, I get a base, so whatever. The mission becomes very chaotic as I'm trying to build an economy to pump out high-tech units and also micro my hornets. Trying to micro hornets is a nightmare because while all my units have insane aggro range, hornets feel like they fly after enemies two light years away from where I want them. I believe the game keeps units in formation when moved instead of sending units to a specific point and it's a surefire way to isolate units with no support. One awful part of the mission are the hunters with the assault beam upgrade, which might as well be a scarab beam versus the shuttles. Spartans have the ability to hijack any vehicle, and the AI uses it to be woefully out of position here with these banshees over the water. Sometimes it can hijack like a wraith or something, but no, this time they all got banshees. I build wolverines, anti-air jeeps, to help deal with the banshees and vampires. Vampires are anti-air needler flyers that are pretty rad and I hope they come back in some way that doesn't involve murdering me. Also, the Banshees in this mission have the Kamikaze upgrade, which means they dive bomb targets upon death, and I'm sure you can guess why that's a massive problem. The last 60 seconds of this mission are the worst part of the entire run. The Covenant builds a mega turret deep behind enemy lines that has full map vision and destroys everything in a single volley, including the shuttles. To be honest, I just had to reset this last minute over and over again. I noticed that the turret doesn't target the same things each time I reset, and, like most things in this game, it is capable of missing its projectiles. I try to spread my units around the shuttles to add more potential targets. The turret can also target my base, so I try to build my own turrets to give it more things to shoot at. Then I build more hornets because the mega turret has a hard time hitting air units, and I just hope it puts the RNG in my favor or something. It is unbelievably frustrating to have your success come down to pure distilled RNG like this. There is not a single thing I can do except reset and pray to the Forerunners that the shuttles survive this. After too many tries, the shuttles evac and I can escape my cross-mapping arch nemesis. Arcadia Outskirts requires a perfect opening because the Covenant builds another mega turret. However, I can reach it this time. I send my army forward while Forge collects scattered supplies. I'm given control of Red Team for the rest of the campaign, and they are definitely lore accurate in terms of power. I'm also given ODSTs, another UNSC super unit who may not be as good as Alpha 9, but they're close. 
I send the ODSTs to occupy two garrisonable reactors on the way to my base while Red Team clears the stragglers. I receive a base and move my units into position. Red Team goes into cover, making them tied with Master Chief and lore power. The Scorpion stays back and the Marines hide. I immediately build a field armory and get the MAC Blast upgrade. Then I retreat the ODSTs back to my base. I needed them to boost my tech level needed for the MAC Blast upgrade, and thankfully losing tech levels while upgrading doesn't cancel the upgrade. The reason why I did all this is because the Covenant rarely, if ever, start with constructed buildings. They take time to build. Meaning, there is a tiny window where the Mega Turret is being constructed and therefore vulnerable to death via two MAC Blasts. Forge parks on the high ground highway and gets bullied while I patiently wait to send this turret to Kingdom Come. Yeah, thanks for the tip, Serge. A pelican with additional units drop by and give me ODSTs, useless flamethrowers, and cobras, anti-vehicle vehicles who lack the health to survive most engagements but can siege, I, I mean lockdown, and become long-range annihilators. Without the threat of the turret, I get cozy in my crater. I have to wait for a special delivery before the game gives me permission to move on, and building more units at this point increases the risk of failure, so I turtle up and build my economy. I also get an additional pelican drop with another cobra. I should mention now that the Spartans of Red Team do have names and unique weapons. Alice with the chain gun, Douglas with the rockets, and Jerome with the Spartan laser. They will become incredibly important units in this campaign because I have them in every mission. After 20 minutes of turtling in my crater, I get my reinforcements. Six additional Spartans. I mean, they're literal clones of Red Team, but who cares? I'm allowed to finish the mission at this point by destroying the enemy base, but these mega turret shenanigans made me mad. I want to annihilate the Covenant, and I have just the tool to do this. For some reason, on the fifth mission of the entire campaign, you can build Vultures, the single best unit in the UNSC roster, who has the health to win most, if not all, engagements. I roll up to this base with nine Spartans, three Vultures, and four Mac Blasts, and turn it into the unyielding Hierophant 30 years before that book even happens. Then my screen remains blurry until the mission is over. Dome of Light is a walk in the park compared to Arcadia Outskirts, at least at first. I garrison Jerome nearby and use Spartans as defense. The main objective is to send experimental rhinos, borrowed from the Pillar of Autumn, to various positions. The mission gets harder with each rhino I place. However, there's no need to rush, so I relax and macro. I voluntarily train marines and garrison them in the nearby reactors. I'm stuck on one base, so I need all the tech I can get. I lose the ability to build air units, so instead I build scorpions and wolverines. These vehicles become the backbone of my army from here on out. I have the Wolverines farm dropships at the first placement site, then move Scorpions to what will be the second site. Covenant structures will start building here when the first Rhino is placed, so I'm basically repeating the Mega Turret strategy from Arcadia Outskirts. When placed, the Rhino leaves my army, and the Scorpions farm the attempted Covey base. Allied ODSTs are dropped in to help defend the Rhinos, but keeping them alive is a tall task when they like to charge into enemy forces. So instead, I focus on never losing a Rhino. When the second Rhino is placed, the third location is revealed, which requires a Pelican transport ability, a nifty leader power letting me transport units across the map on the few missions it's allowed on. I fly in some tanks to clear the area, but before I place the Rhino, I split my forces to the fourth and fifth placements because the Covenant again try to build a mini bases there. I bring in Forge too, who hasn't done much except to get supplies. The Rhino is placed, tanks blow up the bases, and I'm formally introduced to the Locust, a long-range building killer who will be a problem in later missions. Clearing these placements was easy, but there are constant drops of hunters at these points that I can't effectively deal with. After many trials and errors, I move some wolverines to these placements and retire poor forge back to my base. In hindsight, I probably could have built more wolverines and scorpions and I would have had a much easier time. Lots of chaotic unit movements and pelican flights later, the mission changes. I'm given 40 mag blasts to reduce the covenant base to atoms. Quite a cathartic end to this mess. Scarab is next, and it's probably the jankiest mission in the game. I have to destroy a stationary Halo 2 Scarab. The gimmick is that it sweeps the map with a laser pointer, and when it sees you, it fires a beam that kills anything in seconds. There is destructible cover to hide behind, and you can destroy power nodes around the map to slow the speed of the laser pointer, which becomes Forge's new job. The Covenant will attack in big waves as the Scarab takes damage, so I siege, I mean, lock down my Rhinos and make a Cobra. I think Rhinos are good, I mean their attack is just the Cobra attack sound effect with the Wraith attack animation, so I don't know. 
Once again, I could take my time and build up. The jank is with the scarab itself. It sometimes just fires at the ruins protecting my base for no reason and gives me so much unneeded stress. Another piece of jank I recently learned is from Halopedia. Apparently, if you put a marine squad in this watchtower, specifically with the new blood upgrade, the scarab will forever fire on these soldiers and they'll never die. This gives me infinite time to make scorpions and wolverines to take the scarab down, except when it decides to get bored and stop shooting. I scramble my units into cover while dealing with hunters. I eject then re-garrison the watchtower to reset the scarab's memory. And then the scarab decides to just shoot the marines again. I guess he has short term memory. Just in case he loses his object permanence again, I roll in with a small force that I can micro away if needed. I built wolverines because engineers are supposed to come in and heal the scarab, but they never spawn in because the jank train never stops rolling. Attack drops get stronger, but force themselves into easy choke points for my rhinos to hopefully kill. As I canister shell and volley the scarab back, or forward, I guess, to Halo 2, I wonder why I couldn't use the 40 Mac blast from the last mission to be done here in 2 seconds. Next stop is Etron Harborage, aka Shield World 0459, or just Trove. Anyway, the mission is Anders Signal. Captain Cutter decided it would be a good idea to invade the planet with a single elephant and a hogless forge. Elephants are unique because they can siege, I, I mean, lock down and produce infantry. And I'm expected to make a platoon of unupgraded infantry to take on a fully upgraded brute army. I know Red Team will flank the enemy and bail me out, but I don't know what the trigger is, so I build five marine squads and carpet bomb the last row of enemies. I see their pelicans spawn in and I watch them work. And of course they're invincible. I get control of Red Team and move up the hill. Before the mission properly intros the flood, I park my elephant by this flood den. Flood spawners cannot be killed, so it keeps the den in a state of dormancy to prevent eventual attack waves. I hide my marines behind what will be my base and send my heroes to the elephant and find the Flood. The Flood are an interesting faction. As you'd expect, they kill and infect infantry but otherwise aren't too bad save a few things. Their spawners never die, and a couple other fun little things I'll comment on when we cross them. With the elephant rescued, Cutter says, Okay fine, elephants were a bad idea, here's a base. From here, the mission is very easy. I build my base while fending off ineffectual flood attacks and brute packs who are stupidly strong when my heroes aren't around. The bonus objective here is to rescue four groups of ODSTs, all of whom have five-star veterancy for some ungodly reason. I find the first three scattered squads with no issue. The last group poses a problem. There is an event that happens where they say, oh, I got bit, is that bad? Then one squad turns into combat forms. The way this works is very interesting. If the last squad you find engages in combat, then one of the other ODST squads will become infected flood. Halopedia claims that if the last squad or all the ODSTs are fighting while these voice lines happen, then nobody will turn into flood. I spent so long trying to make sure that every single ODST was fighting something while these lines were happening, but unfortunately I don't think this glitch works anymore, so I cannot save this last squad. Saving the last elephant is a cinch, and I move on to the next mission a little bit salty. The Flood is the first big macro mission against our favorite galactic horror, and thank the Forerunners, it's very easy. I keep the three elephants from last time and I have two bonus supply pads, which gives me a big boost to my base defenses and economy. The first objective is to rescue Red Team, but there's no time requirement for this, so I take my time relaxing and macroing. Forge is once again on the ground, but his hog is still missing, so he hides at home. Across the map is another base location. I always think this site is heavily defended or something, but nah, it's totally free to grab as early as you like. While scouting around, I found this lone infected elite in the center of the map with a Spirit of Fire logo. I couldn't find any documentation on this, so either I found this easter egg nobody else has, or it's more likely that Halo Wars has very little documentation compared to the FPS Halo games. A very fun flood unit is the Flood Launcher, a long range artillery piece that melts my units. This one particular launcher was operated by an infected stormtrooper, but trust me, these launchers get deadly. After about 20 minutes, I rescue Red Team and put them in my Hornets. The map is difficult to traverse with ground units, so Hornets are a must. Once rescued, the mission shifts to killing a proto Gravemind. You can either go straight to the Gravemind and take it out, or eliminate flood colonies around the map to reduce its health. I knock out a couple colonies and proceed to carpet bomb the Gravemind because I have constant vision of it. But the monument to this sin of a game survives on 1 HP. I send in my swarm of Hornets to finish it off. Actually, my bike of hornets to finish it off, but a hornet dies in the fade to black. I decide to keep my bike safe and carpet bomb the gravemind. 
I like this mission a lot because the Flood don't put up much of a fight. Now, I don't know what the antithesis of foreshadowing is because this is definitely it. To be honest, I skipped Shield World and tackled it towards the end of my run. This mission is a pure pain train that requires a perfect opening. There are three groups of allies to save and I'm on the clock. I open by sending my marine squad to a nearby reactor and sending my scorpions forward to take out some flood launchers. Flood bases must be taken out for my allies to be saved. The marines in the reactor is a risky play, but I only have one base. My sole advantage in this mission is that structures build faster. While macroing, I have to conserve money to cryobomb the flood attack waves that hit Alpha Platoon. Cryobomb freezes any units and deals massive damage to flyers. However, this doesn't stop the flood swarms. Unfortunately, I cannot save every unit here, so I rule that I'm saving the Grizzly, the Elephant, and Red Team. The issue is the Flood Swarms, flush birds from hell that can stack up like StarCraft II air units and deal insane DPS. To give me more time, I get Gremlins to place at Forerunner Pylons. They're useless in combat and cause me a headache in this mission because they give me one supply when flown in and leave my army when placed. Like right here. I charge in with two tanks and three Wolverines. I'm so pressed to save the Grizzly that none of my units are upgraded yet. Once cleared, I get the Grizzly, and I also discover another Pylon, which is why I bump up to 22 supply and back down to 21. The Gremlins are invincible once out of my control, I think, so I don't have to worry about them. Normally, you'd go for Bravo Platoon next, but I know this base builds anti-vehicle thrasher forms, and I can't deal with them right now, so I go for Red Team. One really satisfying cryobomb later, I get Red Team. I sent my Grizzly to the third Pylon to clear the way for the next Gremlin. Then, right here is when said gremlin left my army. I grit my teeth and prepare for the last base. And the game forgot to build thrashers, I guess. It still sucks because I have to deal with the flyers and the launchers, but at least I don't have to deal with the ground forces. The last base is cleared and I'm forced to personally escort the last platoon to my base. I send my army back home for defense and use the wolverines to escort the vulnerable infantry to safety. With 11 minutes left on the clock, I bring everyone home and escape this dreadful mission. Cleansing is probably the second most chaotic mission in the campaign. Instead of fighting on the ground, we're on the deck of the Spirit of Fire. My army is now a very limited selection built from infantry or vehicle airlocks. I can garrison units into these airlocks to protect them, which I do to my flamethrowers and forge eventually. Gosh, I really miss Warthog Forge. Usually, I build a bike of hornets here, but sentinels make an appearance and deal insane DPS. The super sentinels that spawn later on can two-shot hornets. The mission starts as a frantic firefight to stay alive, where my only objective is to keep at least one airlock alive. Shortly after, the real mission starts. Every few minutes, a wave of Forerunner space magic sweeps the deck and damages my units, so I have to garrison my ground forces and fly my air units through the wave in the opposite direction. However, this magic also kills the Flood and permanently removes their spawners, so now the objective is to make sure every structure is eliminated from the deck. Most of the spawners are only where Hornets can access, so I take them out right before the magic comes to ensure they won't regenerate, and so I don't leave my Hornets out for the Super Sentinels to snipe. Meanwhile, my army protects the airlocks and I spam as many healing auras as I can. The Sentinels suck to fight, but at least they do a great job of killing the Flood for me. As more Flood die, the mission gets easier. Cutter feels bad for me and gives me two Vultures, who thankfully don't die in milliseconds to Super Sentinels. After the fourth wave passes, all spawners have been eliminated and all that's left is to mop up the Flood. I've always found this mission to be strange in that you can clear out all the Flood and Sentinels, but the game takes a while to recognize that you've finished. And thank Born Stellar, it finally let me move on to something worse. Repairs is probably the most chaotic mission in the campaign. I'm still on the Spirit of Fire and we need to repair the power core. I immediately move all my units to the core and set the rally point there, then queue up four more Cyclops. They're useless anti-building mechs who can heal stuff, including the core. I'm also introduced to the Hawk, the last UNSC super unit and is basically an African murder hornet compared to my normal hornets. I continuously build Hawks to supplement my army because anything else will get bogged down in the endless enemy infantry. I literally blob my army at these choke points because the amount of Covenant charging at me is insane. Hunters, Locusts, Vampires, Banshees, and yes, a Mega Turret that is outside the map. I'm not very good at microing my units, and that's compounded by my panic at how many units I'm fighting. I'm not really sure how everyone stayed alive this time, I mean just look at what's going on. My brain kinda just froze at the end here. I couldn't hide any units in the airlocks because I needed as much firepower as possible. 
but I can't constantly build units because they might get spawn killed. And I can't build more Cyclops to end the mission faster because they'll definitely be spawn killed. This means Forge finally sees some action as my last line of defense. When the core is repaired, I move everyone into a corner to make sure no one dies during the fade to black. What I find crazy is that this mission feels like an eternity, but is actually only 6 minutes with 5 Cyclops. I'm back on the ground in Beachhead, a map with no beaches. Anders has been kidnapped for like the past 5 missions and we need to evac her, which goes as well as you could expect. I have to defend this new evac point against a whopping handful of enemies. Once again, Forge is without his hog. The defense isn't bad in Anders evacs, reducing my supply by 1, and in return, Red Team drops in. The objective now is to take every base on the map, and capturing the first one is brutal. I send Alice to hijack a locust, then everyone else moves to hide, and Jerome takes a wraith. This base is brutal because everybody, including my army, has crazy aggro range and will run into danger. The turrets have crazy attack range, and jackals flank me very quickly. I move my infantry to the corner for their own safety, then move my vehicles to intercept the jackals. I could hijack another wraith here, but I have plans for Douglas. When the base takes enough damage, they drop in a legion of honor guards, which is pretty goofy, but they're anti-infantry, so I body block with my vehicles. I park Forge, I mean, I stand Forge and the poor flamethrowers at the Flood Spawner right next to my base and I immediately get attacked. I'm forced into turtle mode here because I'm constantly attacked by ground forces, random Flood Flyers, and Banshee Sky Parades. I need everyone at home, there's no room to move around the map. So, I macro, and macro, and macro. I spend 20 minutes just building my army, vultures, scorpions, and wolverines as you'd expect, but I don't conquer the map just yet. I need to deal with the Banshee Sky Parades, so I send two vultures to take out the parade floats. The, the proverbial parade floats, that they're going to kill the Banshee production buildings. The first structure is at the last base you're supposed to destroy. The next is in the opposite corner, and I find a conspicuously abandoned scarab I'll deal with later. I mega barrage the second summit and realize that the last production structure was right next to the first and I just missed it. I decide to get a little silly and destroy what's typically the last base, which was actually really easy because besides turrets, they only have honor guards and lots of hunters. Except for the first appearance of the Halo 3 Scarab, the Covenant Uber unit. And it's shooting rainbows because that is the secret skull I put on. It's called Wovwoo, which turns the Scarab beams into beams of happiness. Look, I just needed something silly to keep me sane, okay? It's a close battle, but my Uber units prevail and the plateau is secured. Next base to take is what's normally the second. I bring in my vultures to soften it up before bringing in ground forces. The base is tough. Very little room to maneuver. Hunters, shade turrets, and even vampires show up. It takes all my canister shells and volleys to clear everything out. Thankfully, the Covenant never attack me once they're at a single base, so I have plenty of time to heal up and position my army for the final push. I grab the abandoned scarab, giving me a significant advantage, only because of the rainbow beams, of course. Once I'm ready, I move in vultures to take out a mass of hunters, then bring in everyone else, and melt the base with sunshine and rainbows. As soon as I order a new base, the beach vacation ends. Reactor is the calm before the storm, or the escape, I guess. The goal is to drag the spirit slipspace engine up a mountain. And Forge has his hog again! Things are looking up. Literally looking up at this gigantic Forerunner Everest. There are three Covenant bases to cleave through before reaching the summit. I have to build an elephant to haul the engine, but once the engine is hitched, the elephant no longer receives upgrades, so I wait for the ceramic armor upgrade before even moving the engine. The mission's bonus objective is to kill vampires, meaning a bike of hornets isn't viable, so I'm making wolverines and scorpions again, baby. Right here, I position my units to fend off its attack wave. It's a scary wave to deal with this early in the mission, but thankfully, Red Team is good. I quickly move my army up to this now undefended base, but I have to stall and kill random harassment. The enemy never sends a real scary force to the engine, just banshees, vampires, flood bombers, flood swarms, and sentinels, but only like one or two at a time for optimal annoyance. Next is assaulting the base, and good lord, it has full shields and fully upgraded turrets. After lots of ability spamming, I finally get my second base. Only two bases left to go. I go into full macro mode, making more tanks and teching to vultures. I send my tanks up the ramp to clear out a small flood base, and I see the rainbow beams of doom. I only have a little bit of time to heal up, position my army, and oh, it's here already. It took a few tries to get right, but my core strategy was to keep building this one turret because the scarab would target it every single time it was building. I know the Covenant will build another Scarab eventually, so I push up the ramp to the Flood base. Surprisingly, it's an incredibly easy base with only three spawners, one launcher, and barely any enemies. 
After 30 minutes, I finally build an elephant and hitch it to the core. Serena claims that if the elephant dies, the engine rolls down the hill. I have never seen that happen before, so if you have, let me know in the comments. In the middle of me preparing to push the next base, another scarab appears. This time, I have lots of abilities to spam and only almost lose a single unit. Also, I see this infected grunt squad, and I don't think I've ever seen this unit before. I assault the second base with a larger army, and it's cleared out with no issues. The silliness continues because I build three cobras of my own free will in anticipation of another scarab. Meanwhile, the elephant is slowly treading its way to my new base. Forge is extremely useful in this mission to deal with the harassment I mentioned earlier, speeding up and down Forerunner Kilimanjaro to deal with the vampires who somehow outrange my turrets. The attack on the final base is a little challenging because it's at an awkward angle, but there isn't a scarab here like I thought. The destruction is textbook. Flawless, even. Then, a cobra dies to the smallest sentinel possible. With some more babysitting, the base falls again, and the elephant ever so slowly lumbers up Forerunner Denali, whisking us to the final mission. Though, of course, I sit through my obligatory viewing of the greatest Halo cutscene ever made. Do any other boomers out there remember the Halo AMVs made to the entire Breaking Benjamin and Three Days Grace discography that featured every frame of this cutscene in some form or another? Ah, <sighs> those were the good old days. This is it. The artificial planet full of Covenant, OP flood forms, and terrifying Forerunner robots is about to explode, and I need to GTFO. The objective is to activate pairs of interlocks on opposite sides of the map to escape. Forge sacrificed himself to ensure our escape. I need to honor his memory in the best way I can, making an army of grizzlies. Except you can't make grizzlies on the final level! You have ODSTs, Hawks, Mac Blast, Cryo Bombs, and Carpet Bombs, but you can't make grizzlies. So you may think I'm going for Wolverine, Scorpions, and Vultures again, but no. I'm going for mass hawks, just to like change it up a little bit, I guess. I continue my streak of silliness by checking out the base to the left of my main base, which is normally occupied by Covenant, but this early in the mission, the Covenant don't build anything here. The main Covenant base is two feet away from this location, but the Covenant's own stupidity keeps me safe. The shield wall right here is different from the others because no units can walk through it while it has a garrison, and because the Coveys have a garrison, their own units can't directly attack me. I keep Red Team here as my permanent base defense instead of keeping them in my army. This map is a four-way brawl. Me in the south, Sentinel spawning in the center, Covenant to the west, and Flood all over the east. Thankfully, the other goobers are constantly fighting and softening each other up. After about five minutes, Forge turns on the mission timer. 30 minutes to activate all the interlocks. I start my bike of hornets and move into Flood territory to grab another base. It's around this time I get my Hawk upgrade, and now I can really get rolling. To activate the interlocks, all nearby enemy units must be eliminated and my units need to be close by. However, I carefully choose when to activate the interlocks because it'll create a hole in the map and likely cause the patrolling scarab to path into my base and units. I move my army through the flood side of the map. I don't need to clear the map or take more bases, I just want to clear a path to flank the Covenant stronghold without going through the hotly contested middle area. My swarm of hawks do wonderfully, actually. My kettle of hawks do wonderfully. Well, I might as well Google my other units. I've been building beds of scorpions, gangs of wolverines, and committees of vultures. I love nomenclature. I move the kettle to the corner near the Covenant base and build my own base for some security. Then a scarab paths into my kettle and I spend like 10 minutes getting this particular sequence correct. I started the mission with three ODST squads. Two are occupying supply pad structures, but the third is just kind of hanging out. I flew this squad on a pelican all the way to the Covey base to garrison my own mega turret. And man, it feels nice to give a Covenant a taste of their own medicine. With a maxed out kettle, cryo bomb, carpet bomb, mac blast, and mega turret, I let out all my remaining anger on the Covenant. I heal up and see my ODSTs across the map getting wrecked. So I fly over there, but open the interlock on this side before I go. Then the mission ends because I forgot I already released interlock on the other side. A fitting end to a frustrating, silly, and rewarding run of Halo Wars. I escape Shield World Etron Trove Harborage 0459 just as it collapses. We count our forces and confirm that we never lost a single soldier that was under my command, except for one Sergeant John Forge. Halo Wars Deathless on Legendary is totally possible. <sighs> but man, I need to rest. I'm gonna go to cryosleep for about 28 years.
Thanks for watching. Captain, wake up. Something has happened.